Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Today we are going to talk about vector norms from the machine learning perspective. What this means is that we're going to deviate from the more traditional approach of teaching vector norms in linear algebra and instead focus on some practical aspects of uh, vector norms and why they're useful in machine learning. You probably have seen these two uh, unit balls, the two norm and one norm, uh, when studying about regularization in machine learning and data science. So you'll be able to see how you can plot these things in less than five minutes. So let's get started. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So what is a vector? In machine learning, a vector is a 1D array of numbers. For example, let's import NumPy and scikit-learn and look at one of the data sets known as Iris Flower that is available uh, within scikit-learn. And now we look at the first data point in this data set, and we can see that we have four scalars or four numbers that they form a one-dimensional array. So this is what we call a vector. And now the informal definition of norm is that norm measures the size of vector. So you want to summarize these four numbers that are here using a single number. So let's move on to the formal definition of norm. The norm of a vector is actually a function that maps a vector to a positive value. If you look at linear algebra textbooks, there are um, certain conditions that have to be met in order to have a valid function or valid norm for vectors. But the most common form that you really need for machine learning is known as p-norm, where p is greater than or equal to one. So let's say you have a vector x that has n elements. And I use this i here for indexing to show the i element of this vector. In this case, this p norm, which is a function, as we just mentioned, takes an n dimensional object or vector and produces a real valued number. So, how this mapping or how this function works is given using this uh, formula that we have here. The P norm, which where you see the P here is the subscript. Uh, and um, as you can see here, we use it, uh, this notation here is sum over all the elements of this vector of each element, absolute value raised to the power of P. And when you add all together, then you take the, uh, the raise this to the power of one over p. So you use a root function. Something that I personally like is to take both sides, uh, raise both sides to the power of p. So in this case, the norm of x with respect to p norm raised to the power of p is equal to sum over all elements xi absolute values raised to the power of p. So this is an easier way to remember this uh, formula that we have here, or this function. Now, in the next slide, we're going to see that we can set p equals 1, equals 2, anything that we, we satisfies this uh, condition here. So when p is equal to, this is known as two norm or Euclidean norm. So this is something that you have seen for probably a long time. Uh, maybe even you didn't know that this is called two norm, but this is exactly what it is as the sum of the squares of the uh, elements. And then you take the square root. And because here you're already taking this raised to the power of two, this means that we can get rid of the absolute value and we just have xi squared. So it's the sum of these squares, and then you take the square root. So this is the Euclidean norm. And then the one norm, based on what we had in the previous slide, is just simply the sum of the absolute values. Here, we cannot get rid of the absolute value because that's something very important. And in fact, 
uh, actually very uh, essential to make sure that what we get as the norm of this function to be positive. Otherwise, if uh, these xi's are negative, then you get a negative, you may get a negative value. So that's why here you have to use this uh, sort of like, you know, absolute value for each of these elements of the vector x. So how does this work? Especially if you want to uh, uh, implement this. So in order to work on a simple implementation of this, let's look at the definition of unit ball in um, some, um, you know, um, d-dimensional space, where here I'm assuming that this d is equal to 2, so it's much easier to visualize and plot this. So if I want to write this mathematically, this means that I'm looking for all vectors x in a two-dimensional space, meaning that each x has two elements, such that the p-norm of x is less than or equal to 1. So I want to see how this sets, uh, set that we have here looks like. So in order to implement this, we can import NumPy, we can import Matplotlib for visualization. In this line, I have adjusted some of the settings to increase the font size and figure size. And then I define this function, which I call it plot unit ball, which accepts two inputs. So n is the number of data points that I'm going to generate, and p here uh, is basically the p norm, because I'm, I want to write the function to be able to find the unit ball for L1 norm, L2 norm. So this P is a variable, uh, which I have to provide. So in order to um, solve this problem here, I'm going to first use a random number generator, and I'm gonna create N data points in a two dimensional space. So because I'm using this, this um, uniform number generator, these generated values will be between zero and one. Um, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to subtract 0. 0.5. So now they're going to be between negative 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5. And then I'm going to multiply this by 2. So in this case, what will happen is that I get values between uh, negative 1 and 1. So I can show this here very quickly. Um, if I have some numbers from 0 to 1, if I subtract this by negative uh, 0. 0.5, I get negative 0.5 to 0.5, and then if I multiply this by 2, I get negative 1 to 1. So this means that now these data points that I have here, this x, um, they're all going to be between uniformly distributed between negative 1 and 1. And then I'm going to initialize this list, which I'm calling ind or int. And the idea is that I want to have a for loop and find the p norm of each uh, column of this matrix x. So this is going to be a vector norm. And if it is less than or equal to 1, I'm going to save or store that index. And at the end, I'm going to um, plot the interior of those data points using plt.fill. Uh, also, here you can see we can add x label, y label, uh, so that we have. Uh, a nice visualization or plot. So if you run this for two choices here, for the p equals 2 and p equals 1, and here I'm also setting the number of data points to 50,000. You can choose any number you want. If it's too low, probably you see a lot of empty spaces here, but you can see that um, the unit ball is different uh, in these two cases. For the 2 norm, is what we call as a circle. And then for the one norm, you can see that now we have these sharp edges. And this is easy to see that why this is happening. For example, for the one norm, we can see that here we have x1 equals 1, x2 0. So that satisfies the condition that we want. Here, both x1 and x2 are 0.5. So it's still the sum, the sum of the absolute values um, is 1. The same thing with here, the same thing with this one. You can see here why we need to have the absolute value because otherwise if I just add this number and this number, I get zero, which is not the case. So I have to take the absolute values. So this is what is called as the L1 ball. 
And on the left side, we have the L2 ball or a circle, right? So this is exactly how circle looks like. And this is something that you see a lot when you talk about regularization in machine learning. And we're going to have a video on that topic, but I wanted to show you how you can find unit balls in um, Python. I hope you found this video helpful. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.